Welcome, this is Professor Nathan Weezy of Marquette University. This section we're going to actually going to talk about converting the continuous time controller to a digital controller for voltage mode control of a buck converter. And this is digital control of power electronics. So essentially what we're going to do is instead of having a continuous time controller now, this is going to be our digital controller. So we're going to pick up where we lost uh, where we left off last section. And so we're going to kind of have this footprint of MATLAB script from the last section. So just kind of briefly review. These are the settings and definitions for the converter. This is our plant transfer function. These are controller design inputs. So essentially selecting the bandwidth, the phase margin, etc. And then lines through 19 through 28 are controller design based on those controller design inputs. And that's kind of where we ended off. And we had a, a controller design last time in the continuous time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to convert this to a digital controller. So this most important thing right here is our sampling time. Essentially, this is how often we run our controller. How often do we sample the output voltage, subtract the reference, feed the error into our controller, calculate a new duty cycle, and update the duty cycle. And in this case, we're actually switching at 100 kilohertz. We're also updating the controller at 100 kilohertz. All right, so this right here, um, we're going to create a transfer function Z domain of just Z. So Z will be a transfer function object in MATLAB, capital Z that is, that is in the um, digital domain with the sampling time of 100 kilohertz. And line 32, this will create our digital controller. Now let's just take a look at how I did this for a second. All I did was, it's very close to line 28, except for what I did is replaced every S with, and I'll highlight it for you, Z minus 1 divided by ZTS, which is the backwards Euler approximation. Okay. And I got a, 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 a digital controller for that. And then I also did this for the Tustin approximation or bilinear transformation. And so we, we have two controllers we're going to look at in this section. One is just converting with the backwards Euler, and the other is doing the Tussin approximation. Okay. All right, so this one here, equation one, this is doing backwards Euler. And what we're going to do is look at the output voltage and current under control with this controller due to a load step from 10% to 100% load. And what you can see here is our output voltage. So in blue, that is the continuous time controller. This is the continuous time controller. And in red, we have our digital controller. You can see there's, there's definitely a noticeable difference. Okay, in, in this case, you can see there's more overshoot, um, both undershoot and overshoot. And you can see it, it takes a little bit longer for it to settle as well. You can see the same with uh, the current. And then down here in duty cycle, let's point out what's going on. So we have um, this blue and this maroon that sits on top of it. That's actually the the uh, continuous time. One is the unsaturated, one's the saturated. And then this purple and yellow, those two are your actually digital controller. One's saturated, one's unsaturated. So if we look at this two here, this is our digital controller. And this is the output of the controller, the actuation signal, or in other words, the duty cycle. And you can see this is kind of what makes up the big difference here. Our sample time is relatively big compared to 
um, the transient here, what you would see in the continuous time. That's why you see they're not exactly the same. And it's okay that they're not exactly the same, but you just, you must understand as a designer, there's going to be these trade-offs when you go from continuous time to a digital controller. It's not going to match your continuous time response. And thus you need to make sure that you go and back check everything, meaning, well, I designed for this response and I got it in continuous time, but now I'm converting this to digital domain. I need to back check everything and make sure that it still maintains the type of response I'd like to see in terms of uh, rise time, for instance, or undershoot, overshoot. Um, so you can see in this case, definitely with the undershoot here, there's definitely a big difference. I would say 14.8, I don't know, approximately, and I'm just eyeballing this, 200 millivolt difference between the two, right? And that, that could make or break your application. Um, you could be at spec with your, your continuous time control and not at spec when you convert it to digital. And so you definitely need to go ahead and check these after you design them. And there's, there's a lot of reasons why these could be a lot different. So uh, one thing we'll talk about here is you could... We didn't implement it here, but you could do anti-windup in the digital um, domain, anti-windup. So what is anti-windup? Essentially, once the controller outputs a one or whatever the equivalent number is for duty cycle of one, you stop actuating when your controller error is positive because you've already essentially saturated. And what happens is if you go above that, you keep running your controller, you'll get some number above one, and you're winding up. Even though you had a value of, say, 1.2, your controller only really can respond to a one. So you can see in this time up here, the controller is actually wound up, which means once you actually hit your set point, um, which is somewhere around here, your air starts going negative and you overshoot almost the other way because you have wound up so much. So you can, you could, in one way to make this better is implement anti windup. And so let's just write this in words stop running controller when output is one and air is positive. And what I mean by running is you, it, your controller is still on. I'm just saying don't update the value because if your error is greater than zero and you're already at one or past one and you update it again, you're going to get some number again larger than one or, or that you already had. So essentially you're stopping the, the updating of the controller output. And, and so what happens is it's a simple if then else. If, if your controller's output is greater than one, set it to one. And um, if the error is also greater than zero and you are greater than one, just don't update the controller, leave it at its current value. And then once your error drives back the other way, negative, well then just resume normal operation, meaning you update your controller at your sample frequency. That's a pretty easy way to um, implement and to wind up in a if then else sense. Okay, so we did this controller again, but this is now Tustin here in equation two. So this is converting the continuous time function to Tustin to the bilinear um, transform. And now we get a third set of waveforms sitting on top of each other here. And so you get this yellow slash orange one, which is the Tustin digital controller, our red one, which is our backwards Euler, and blue, which is our um, continuous time. And you can see they're all different, right? So this is why it's absolutely imperative that you check the output of your controller after you um, design this to make sure it's meeting your, your response time. Now, something that's also interesting here is, depends when you sample too, you can see that this is really easy. You have this one cycle sample delay at, at 10 kilohertz. You can see right here, Right here is where the transient actually started in continuous time. It'll actuate right away because there is no sampling rate. But you can see in these two cases, um, it took almost one to two cycles before it actually started actuating. And again, that's just due to the sample delay. You have you have one over TS sample delay, and for us, it's one over 100 kilohertz or um, 10 microseconds. So 
you can also see that. And that's essentially what's probably leading um, a big reason why um, these are these are slower, or in other words, the voltage is undershooting, overshoot shooting more than the continuous time is just in this design due to the sample delay. Okay. All right, this concludes this section on digital voltage mode control of a bug converter using uh, backwards Euler approximation and using Tustin approximation. Thank you.